Continue rolling along here on Halloween Eve. And Bill's big complaint is that since Honest Donna no longer works here, there's not a candy bowl out front. I yeah, we have we need to bring some candidates back in, Rob, at the table. <laughs> at the, we had a couple yesterday, but they did not bring they any sweets. They didn't bring sweets. Yeah, they just brought ideas, and discussions. <laughs> that's that's fine as far as sure. it goes. But we it don't does need not, ideas. We no, don't need we, those we need sweets. sweets. We need, we need candy. Yeah. If anybody's out there listening, feel sorry for us. Uh, we're, we're suffering, folks. We're suffering. We'll even take uh, the leftovers next week. You guys Whatever you got left. Sad, sad begging. We got nothing it. today. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Well, actually, if you give me a chance, I'll get on my knees, Rob. I'm not proud. You know, had I really thought this out, I would have invited Jackie Long in today because her husband would have sent can- bags of candy with her for the show today. I should have thought of that. We have 30 minutes, Jackie. Yeah. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> Now you're down to 23. Chris Warner is our guest here on the program this morning. He is the Republican nominee for the job of Secretary of State. Chris uh, actually visited with us in the studio back in, during the primary. He joins us via telephone this morning. Chris, good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. Uh, so what is the favorite candy there? Is it chocolate or is it? To, no, for, no, for me, it's a it? Twix or a Kit Kat. Yeah, to me, it makes no difference. <laughs> Just yeah. whatever right. they bring sometimes, in. Sometimes, Chris, sometimes baked goods will trump all of the all of the types of candy that you can get. But, baked goods are are probably preferable. But we're not particularly particular, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe right. you pulled those all words right. off. We're, we still got a day before uh, Halloween, so we'll see what we can do to help uh, make sure those are delivered. Well, that's, that works. But but not on Thursday, since I'm not here on yeah. Thursday. <laughs> that's right. Neither one of you will be here tomorrow. Yeah, we will not. So, yeah. well, you had your shot. You had your shot at it. Uh, it's all right. Neither of us need it, really. Chris, let's talk about your campaign for Secretary of State uh, in West Virginia. We talked with you, of course, right. uh, during the primary about this position. And uh, give us uh, the one-minute uh, stump speech about why you had interest in this job and what you want to do with it. You know, i got to tell you, it was uh, my older brother, Buffy, who ran for the state senate back in 1986. And I was going door-to-door with him. And I asked him, I said, Buffy, you're pretty young. How do you know when it's time to run for public office? And he said, well, the day that you wake up and you know you can do better than the, the other candidates or the other office holder, you have an obligation to run for office. It's not a choice. It's an obligation. And uh, I've matched up my life experiences in business and building business and enterprise centers and leading rural development under President Trump uh, for USDA and then now under Governor Justice at the West Virginia Economic Development Authority. And then you add in uh, my time in uh, politics as a county chairman, a state chairman, Republican National Committee man for the Republican Party. It matches up perfectly with the two jobs that the Secretary of State uh, is uh, tasked with, and that's being the chief uh, elections officer and uh, the chief business uh, registrar for the state of West Virginia. So I'm prepared. I'm uh, proud that um, my party, the Republican Party, chose me by more than 50,000 vote margin uh, in the primary over my opponents. Uh, so I'm ready to go to work and uh, you know continue the good work that uh, has been started over the last seven years with uh, Secretary of State Mack Warner. One of the folks you defeated in the primary... Ken Reed locally filed an ethics complaint against you with the Secretary of State's office. Can you tell us the status of that complaint, uh, Chris, and what you believe the basis of it to be? Well, I don't know what the the status of the the complaint is. Uh, I know the Secretary of State's office keeps a a tight hold on any investigation, but I can reassure you that we have not done uh, anything wrong. Uh, We've followed the letter of the law. Um, as it relates to campaign contributions and keeping an arm's length uh, transaction, you know, away from any political action committee uh, that may have benefited my campaign. I think, you know, from what I've read on uh, his complaint, uh, the political action committee that he's referring to probably did more to defeat other candidates than they did to help me, but uh, um, we haven't, you know, we haven't done anything wrong. He, he, the complaint said he suspects collusion between uh, a Mr. Scott, Mark Scott, and and you specifically. Were there any workings with the two of you in, involved in the campaign? 
Well, uh, uh, you're allowed to solicit uh, contributions for a political action committee in West Virginia. You just can't be involved in the expenditure. Um, Mark Scott is a, a friend from many years ago. Uh, we both recruited candidates to run for the West Virginia legislature. Uh, so I'm not going back away from a, a friendship, but uh, we haven't done anything that is wrong or against the law in West Virginia. Let's talk about what you want to accomplish as the Secretary of State. Your brother, of course, is the current Secretary of State, and one of the things that he did that got praise and some criticism from others was the way that he cleaned up the voter rolls in West Virginia. Yeah. What would you like to do in regards to, A, either continuing that program or, or B, modifying it in its own way to suit what you'd like to do as Secretary of State? You know, one of the things that Mac has done is he's worked very closely with the uh, the county clerks. And I, in fact, I would go back to his uh, first race. And I think one of the main reasons that he was uh, elected uh, was that the county clerks were not working well together with the previous secretary of state. Uh, but Mac has uh, worked closely with them. I think it's the secretary of state's duty to uh, make sure that the county clerks have all the tools necessary they uh, necessary to uh, provide clean voter rolls because uh, you know it's clean elections begin with clean voter rolls but that is something that is not static just because they've removed over 400,000 names from the voter rolls in the last seven and a half years um, you know, that effort needs to continue, uh, and we need to continue providing uh, the tools necessary, new tools, uh, technology uh, that is available to uh, you know, determine when someone has moved out of state or is registered to file in another state. Uh, and we can always grow those partnerships with other states uh, to find out when someone has moved and not taken their name off the the role in West Virginia. So we'll continue that excellent work. Um, I've got to compliment the Secretary of State's um, professional staff. Uh, you know, they're dedicated employees. They're critical to the operation of our uh, election process. Same goes for the business and, and licensing um, employees. Uh, they, they do an excellent job, and uh, we'll continue that effort. Will you maintain most of that staff should you win the office chris yeah yes sir and i think um you know i think that's why there were as many candidates as there were in the republican primary even had democrats and former unaffiliated uh candidates switching parties to the republican party and that is um to run for secretary of state is there's an excellent staff there uh you know the chief of staff uh d kersey and uh legal counsel, uh, Dave Cook, uh, and the entire elections division. Uh, I have no intention of making any immediate uh, changes there um, because they have such an excellent staff. They're well thought of. I just stopped by the Secretary of State's office yesterday and saw Kathy at the, at the front desk, and she told me what an excellent job when she forwards the phones back to the folks in elections and you know, people are trying to find out, can they still register to vote or their, you know, you know, whatever their questions may be. She goes, I never get a second phone call back. They always handle the calls on the first call uh, back to the, the elections division. So very proud of that, uh, that effort. And uh, we want to make sure that we continue that good work. And that means making no changes. Maria Lawrence. Um, so, Chris, your opponent um, spoke a little bit about the uh, methodology by which people can vote. Um, clearly, there's been, and, and I don't know that uptick is the right word, but um, certainly in this election, people have been very... Um, uh, very inclined, yes, to um, to vote early. Your opponent talked about voting early by na by mail. How do you feel about um, about mail votes? M A I L. Yeah. <laughs> Men should not be allowed to vote. Men should not be allowed to vote. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, you know, you 
you see our we have an absentee by mail uh, option. You know, there are four or five ways to vote, and we have more ways to vote in West Virginia than most other states in the in the country. And you know, the absentee by mail uh, is for specific reasons. It's not a convenience uh, voting by mail. It's absentee by mail, and that's because that's the way the West Virginia legislature laid that out. So as long as you check the box and you fit into one of those 11 categories, uh, I think absentee by mail is, you know, again, an important part of the, you know, the number of options that you have available. You know, we have in-person on Election Day. It's by far the safest and secure under the watchful eye of a a Democrat and Republican uh, poll worker and people there to assist if you need it. Uh, you know, we have early voting, which is 10 days of early voting to include two Saturdays. That's also, uh, you know, a very safe and secure way to to vote. Um, again, there are people there to help in those early voting locations. Um, but we also have, uh, for those that are in the military, active duty, and emergency responders, let's say someone's down in North Carolina right now helping you know, with the the flooding that has occurred and they decide they want to vote, they can vote from their mobile device. They can use their phone and the Secretary of State's office has, you know, a five or six step process that they go through to make sure that 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 vote is safe and secure. And, uh, you know, it's easy to vote, but hard to cheat. Bill? Uh, Chris, uh, your brother Mac received a lot of uh, uh, national applause for the way that West Virginia handled the last election. And uh, he, in fact, I think he testified in front of Congress the steps he took. Uh, Mac was also fairly critical of other states. Uh, will you uh, be equally critical uh, following the election? You know, I had a question the other evening, um, and they wanted to make sure that you know, their vote was counted, but wondered what, you know, if their vote was diminished in any way by, uh, uh, you know, what happened, for example, in, in Pennsylvania. And I mentioned specifically where the Secretary of State in the last presidential election decided to let votes continue to roll in up until three days after the election. Um, and uh, the I pointed out, you know, we have the Electoral College if they were concerned about uh, their vote counting in in a presidential race. uh, You know, it was pretty clear, you know, how how things would go. And in West Virginia, our electoral vote would uh, count. But it's, uh, you know, the popular vote that I think we've also got to watch out for that if one candidate at the presidential level wins the, the Electoral College, but a different candidate wins the popular vote, I'm concerned that we might have uh, Congress pushing to do away with the uh, Electoral College, and that would be devastating for for West Virginia and other small states like West Virginia. Let me let me uh, stop just a second. I'm doing away with the Electoral College. Uh, that would require a uh, Constitution amendment, and there is right. absolutely no way, no way in this time that that is a viable possibility. I um, I hope you're uh, I hope you're correct, uh, but uh, I'm just uh, basing my my comments off uh, you know national news that I've I've heard, uh, and uh, again I, I would be right there with you, making sure that that doesn't occur, um, and making sure that we do our part in West Virginia. But uh, but it requ- it's, it's it requires it requires something like thirty five of those red states. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, to agree, and uh, that's not going. To, that's not going to happen. I agree. Yeah, Chris Warner, our guest here on the program, and uh, Chris, if, in regards to any major changes that you'd like to make for the office, is there anything like that that's on your agenda, or are you looking to keep the tracks uh, going and the train yeah. on time, so to speak? No, no. Yeah, the the question before was about um, you know keeping the the employees. I think what yeah. the employees are actually they're absolutely things that I want to be able to do. And one, for example, is you know right in Martinsburg, you have a a business one stop 
uh, shop uh, sponsored by the Secretary of State's office. There's also one in Clarksburg and one in Charleston. And that makes it easy for businesses that want to start, you know, someone that wants to start a new business to be able to um, you know, stop in at one location and take care of everything that they want to do uh, with all departments, whether it's labor or tax or you know, registering with the Secretary of State's office. But I want to have an office of entrepreneurship. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, proposing that we spend one more dollar or hire one more employee to do this. I want to simply cross-train uh, the employees in the business one-stop shops uh, to help uh, new businesses. Um, you know, for example, locate financing. Um, you know, they they know that they can go to their their local bank, but there are five uh, agencies uh, that I think of in federal and state government that can help with financing, whether that's grants or low interest rate loans. But you have the the U.S. SBA, the Small Business Administration. You also have the Small Business Administration at the state level. You have USDA Rural Development. Uh, you have the Appalachian Regional Commission. And then the West Virginia Economic Development Authority that I'm now the executive director of. Uh, so I want to bring all those things that I've learned over the last 30 years of you know, building business and enterprise centers and helping businesses getting started in, in Morgantown and Philippi and Kaiser uh, to any new business that is starting in West Virginia. Help them with finding government contracts, for example, in, in their line of work of, of their new business that they're starting. Uh, streamlining processes there and providing education, quite frankly, uh, be a resource for those new businesses. So be more than just registering that business, uh, but help them have a quick success in year one so that they can, you know, track the sustainability uh, and hire more employees in West Virginia. So that's one thing, for example, that I'd, uh, I'd like to focus on and uh, not spend additional government dollars. Chris, you've looked at the, I'm going to go back to the ethics violation that we talked about earlier, and mine is going to be strictly an information question, kind of a hypothetical question as well. Uh, if, the, if the ethics violation was identified against you or anybody else in similar circumstances uh, before an election or if it was uh, identified after the election, what are the repercussions? What are the penalties? Is it or is it a paper tiger? First of all, there, there's no elef, uh, ethics violation uh, that, that has occurred. Number one, but uh, excuse me, I'm using hypothetical. The, excuse me, sorry. You're right, right. I'm, I'm yeah. just pointing out that yeah. there is a five-member uh, elections commission for the state of West Virginia. I think it's mostly attorneys on there right now. But any investigation that goes forward has to have the approval of the um, the Elections Commission, and that's a, a commission appointed by the governor. Um, and uh, the Secretary of State uh, would, you know, step back and let the uh, the Elections Commission for the state of West Virginia determine uh, how they would proceed with that. Chris, let's uh, let's talk a bit more about small businesses and the Secretary of State's role in developing those and helping to facilitate the ease of the paperwork. Uh, do you need to make any changes to the website, uh, first and foremost, in regards to either, either publicizing the website so it's more known to people or to making any more processes easier to navigate? Absolutely. I think we, um, we need to... Uh, continually upgrade, but uh, one of the things that I've asked about uh, about the website, and I've heard from the Secretary of State's office, is that they uh, all all contracts like that go through the through the state, and it is a uh, it is a long process to be able to to make those changes and upgrades. But um, there there are several things in addition to knowing that it's, it's state government, you got to work through the process. Um, I absolutely think that we need to, you know, upgrade the the website and continually upgrade the website. One of the things that I'm excited to, you know, carry on, and I know that they've started right now, is um, 
they are trying to find the, the, the 900 most asked questions of the Secretary of State's office have been identified, and uh, they're using artificial intelligence uh, that is garnered just from West Virginia. So, you know, if you ask a question online of Google, you might get a response uh, about a, a business in Texas or Washington State. Uh, but the Secretary of State's office in West Virginia is focused on those questions. Ask of the Secretary of State's office here in West Virginia. And they're coming up with the answers and having uh, the legal uh, department uh, you know, check those answers so that you get the same answer whether you're calling in and talking to someone that's only been with the Secretary of State's office for one year or someone that has been there 25 years. Consistency. And the same goes with the yeah. website, to be able to ask those questions and have those uh, questions answered, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you've decided you're going to start your own business, um, or uh, uh, you, whether it's the middle of the day and you get the same answer from the person answering the phone. Chris, on that note, using the same computer. i got to jump in because we're out of time. Thank you so much for yours. Yes, Best of luck to you in the upcoming election, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Chris. Thank you all.